Cassidy. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tori YouTube channel. We know your time is very valuable, so we will make this as quick and as easy as possible. It is starting to rain here, so if you hear any roof noises, it is raining here. Yeah, we uh, live under these tin roofs, and these tin roofs are extremely excitable. Like, it doesn't have to rain much, and it sounds like the inside of the house is like some sort of a mad drum drum ceremony or something we so say, we say the roof is a drama queen because it'll just be sprinkling outside only making huge banging sounds on the inside yeah it sounds like it's definitely got some stuff going down so we are doing the law statutes and commands of our creator and we are into exodus and we have two dogs that are just just doing what they do they're territorial and bad dogs and you know sometimes i always wonder if hasatan is using these suckers to cause chaos and dysfunction um, or if it's just pit bull nature. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway, we, last time we ended off on Genesis, and a quick uh, recaps of Genesis is that Yah created Adam and Eve. He created the garden. They sinned and were kicked out of the garden. We had the flood. We had the Nephilim. We had uh, the generations of Ham, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then we went to Abraham and his seed that was blessed. We went from Abraham to Yitzhak, which is Isaac in English, to Jacob or Yaakov. And then he had his 12 sons, and we went to Joseph or Yosef, and he was the ruler of Mitzrayim. And during the famine, they all moved down here. Yeah, and the rain is starting to pick up, so we will try not to yell, but it sounds like, <laughs> if it's down here to us, it sounds like it's really loud, so we try not to yell. Okay, so here we are into this, um, and how many commands do we have so far, Eli? 14. Yeah, we have 14, and if you want to, I think it just blew up on me. What a piece of junk. No, it didn't. Okay, so the full laws of Yahuwah. So we have commandment one is be fruitful. Commandment two is multiply. Three is replenish the earth. Four is subdue it, have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living thing. Five, to have dominion over all living creatures. Six, the herb bearing in every tree is for food. Seven, man and woman should build their own families. Number eight is master sin. Number nine is every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood is 10. Walk before me and be perfect is 11. Guard Yahuwah's covenant is 12. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old is 13. And teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah is 14. Okay, so we are jumping into Exodus. Oh, and it just crashed on me. But that's okay. Um, what is the name of Exodus? What is the correct name? Uh, Shemot. All right, and so here we are. So we are in Shemot. Okay, Exodus 1. Now these are the names of the children of Yashrael, which came into Mitzrayim. Every man in his household came with Yaakov, Reuben, Shimeon, Levi, Yahuda, Yisachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Yaakov were seventy souls, for Yosef was in Mitzrayim already. And Yosef died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Yashrael were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there rose up a new king over Mitzrayim, which knew not Yosef. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Yashrael are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falls out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramesses. And, and what is this? Ra Ramses. What does it say in your translation? Uh, it says Pithom and Ramses. Pithom and Ram Rama. Rama. Ram Ramesses is what Ramesses. ours says. All right, and that's how the scriptures is our other one. First of all, <clears throat> but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the, of the children of Yashrael. And the Mitzrayim made the children of Yashrael to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Mitzrayim spoke to the Ivri, midwives. Now, what, what's an Ivri? A, a Hebrew. Hebrew. A Hebrew. So if you want to be, do you want to be called a Jew? No. Why? Because they, that is just one, technically one tribe. Yeah, that's, that's it's technically, not even the name of the tribe. That's it was, incorrect. It was Yahuda. Right, yeah, it's Yahuda. So you wouldn't want to be called Jew. Would you want to be called a Christian? No. Why? Because, because that is its own set of its own, like, it's a, people. It's, a, it's, a, it's not even a 
tribe of Israel. It's not a Hebrew. It's just its own man-made doctrine. What about uh, Seventh-day Adventists? They keep the seventh day. Would you no, want to call that? We would not go any under any title that was given under the the uh, man-made titles. We're not Christians. We're why not wouldn't, Jews. Why we're not messianics. Because every single person that uh, creates their own group or has their own name has these very bad things tied into them. Every single thing has their own man-made doctrine tied right. into it. That's what I was looking for right there. Yeah, man-made doctrines. <clears throat> All right, and so, yeah, we would want to be called an Ivry, I-V-R-I-Y, or a, a Hebrew. Hebrew or Yisraelite. Right, and so, uh, yeah, to everyone out there, my family out there, you guys are all Hebrews. So, uh, welcome welcome to the Ivry tribe. Okay, where are we at? Nicole? 15. Oh, thank you, Nicole. And the king of Mitzrayim spoke to the Ivory midwives, of which the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other, Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Ivory woman, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared Elohim, and did not as the king of Mitzrayim commanded them, but saved the, ch the men children alive. And the king of Mitzrayim called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Ivrith women are not as the Mitzrith woman, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in and unto them. Therefore Elohim dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared Elohim, that he made them houses. That's interesting. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. All right. Any commandments? No commandments. No commandments. Nothing there. Definitely have children. You definitely shouldn't be killing your children. You know, this sounds like a depopulation scheme to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They were scared of the people, and they uh, didn't want any more of these people. Yeah, I don't think there's anything new under the sun, if you know what I mean. It's almost like, kind of like an abortion. <laughs> Well, it is. It's worse than abortion. Well, it's they do. You know, you guys understand in North America, they have partial birth abortions, mm -hmm. right? Up to yeah. like six months in something like even New York. Yeah, the almost babies are, birth. Yeah, yeah, almost a birth. In fact, I believe some states actually allow them after birth. So you decide you have this kid and you decide, ah, you know, I don't want this thing. I'm just going to kill it. That's At that point, I mean, you've already been through almost all the way through birth. At least to like give it out to an adoption or someone that wants a baby. Like, don't kill it. Yeah, no, that has been a problem. You know, it's it ever since Roe versus Wade, we've just we've been a very vile people, and it's uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know really. who was good or who was bad, but someone should have been stopped that day. Yeah, they should have stopped the pharaoh back then. But you know, there's nothing new under the sun. These old depopulation schemes just keep on running, if you know what I mean. All right, Exodus two one, and there went a man in the house of Levi and took to be his woman a daughter of Levi. and the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him for an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the reeds by the river's brink. And the sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Ivarim children. So how would she know this was an Ivarim children? He was circumcised. Probably circumcised, right? That's, yeah, yeah, that's eight days old. I mean, he's like, he's I old enough. He's three months. Also, he's circumcised. I mean, no one else circumcised their children. That's the only way they would know that. I would say also maybe, uh, maybe skin color. Maybe they were different colors. Could be. Know. Could be. Or could maybe be. because he was floating in the river. Yeah, I'm floating through <laughs> the river. That's good. Good. Yeah, excellent. Um, I mean, technically, she did not disobey Pharaoh. She did put him in the river just <laughs> safely. Just put him in a basket in the river. Just safely in the river where he doesn't die. Any one of you guys want to uh, have the. Uh, you guys want to create a basket that can go in a river that can hold a baby and doesn't drown? Oh, man. That's I mean, pretty talented, honestly. Well, that's a lot of work. That's some skills. That's some definite skills. Yeah, a lot of test runs. Because that baby sat in the river for a while. It was only like three days or something. They floated down, floated down the river for a while. Yeah, and then it's finally they saw him. All right. My wife, where am I at? You're on four, Seven. I believe. Seven. Oh, sorry. I was up reading. Okay. Then said his <laughs> sister, Nicole is up off reading. Where are you reading? Oh. Her basket that she made. Oh, uh, is it good? Yeah. Go well, what's with the basket? Um, just that it was. Does your say slime? No. It tar. says tar. Your says tar. Says vitamin and pitch and pyrus and bulrushes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Where would she? Where would you get this stuff? Well, I wouldn't know where you cool get. Cool basket it. makers, man. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's roll on. Uh, thank you. Seven. Then said a sister to Pharaoh's daughter, "Shall I go and call to you a nurse of the Ivarith woman that she may nurse this child for you?" And Pharaoh's. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, 
and the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. So not only did she get to keep her child, basically raise up her child for she got paid a little for while, it. she got paid to do it as well. That's a good. That's amazing. That's great. Um, and then for those following along, I'm going to stay at the top of the verse so you guys can stay with it. I usually try to stay in the middle here, like where we're on 10, but I'll stay at the top. That way I don't get lost either. Okay. And we are on 10, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. And she called his name Moshe. Okay. What does Moshe mean? Drawing out of the water. Drawing out, rescued Moshe, the uh, Yeshreeli Torah giver. He's the man. Tor he's the man. Okay. Uh, verse 11, it came to pass in those days when Moshe was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied a Mitzri smiting an Ivri, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Mitzri and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Ivrim strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smite you your fellow? And he said, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Intend you to kill me as you killed the Mitzrayim? And Moshe feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moshe. But Moshe fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now, here, here timelines here, it's not just like this, right? It's years. We're talking many moons. So he's, yeah, he's old at this point. Like, he's not just like a teenager. He's, <laughs> he's like 40, 50 years old at this point. Yeah, and some of the extracurricular books, when you read, he goes out and he becomes a king of the Solaria. All right, we're not... Did he flee yet? We haven't fled yeah, he yet. just fled. All right, yeah. He became a king of Midian like for like years until, like, until basically he came back to save the Israelites. Wasn't there something about the snakes? He, he was the one that no. figured out how to stop them from the snakes, and so they made him king? Yeah, yeah they, he figured out how to stop the snakes. He like rose up all these uh, had, attack birds. Like yeah, he hung them for days. Yeah, he and he'd have like war attack birds that would go fight the enemies, and they were like, this dude's so smart. He's like, this dude's our king. So he ruled for like 40 years, I think, or something like that. Yeah, he ruled for a long time. And... Uh, this, he's not even married yet. He's just happily living. And people are always giving him gifts and everything. And basically, at the end of it, right before Yah decides he's going to have him uh, uh, go off and save the Israelites before he gets married and all that, he uh, they give him gifts and they're like, hey, we want someone of our own race to be our king. Here's all your gifts. Here's all this stuff. And they left him off in peace. He said, all right. It was fun fun being your guys' king. And then went off to be do his thing. Yeah, they were the, the little people that he found, they were owned. They, they were like somehow they got booted out of their own little city, if I remember right. And they were trying to get back in, and these guys had put vipers all around, and so it, they, it, Moshe saved the day. All right, 16. No, is it 15? I cannot keep up with this. Um, yeah, I fled from the face 16. of her. 16. Yep. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moshe stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to rule their father, he said, How is it that ye come so soon today? And they said, A Mitzri delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moshe was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moshe Zephora his daughter. Anyone take a guess what that means? I don't know. Bird. That's what it says. Zephora, Moshe's wife. All right, a couple things. Uh, he didn't just instantly give him the wife, Zephora, for uh, wife. He was actually... So when he sat down with... Uh, What's his name? What was the father's name? It's Jethro. Jethro, yeah. He sat down with Jethro to eat, and he's like, he basically gave him the backstory where he's from. He's from like Egypt. He was Didn't he put him in jail? Yeah, he put him in prison. Like He just left him to starve and die. But Zipporah, yeah. the reason he yeah, married Zipporah was because Zipporah went down and fed him and watered him every single day for like 11 years. And he's like, he, he didn't. Why isn't this guy Jethro, dead? Jethro decides to go check on this dude out of, out of like randomness out of 11 years later. He's like, oh wow, this dude's still alive. Let him up. Should've he's like, a skeleton he's like alive. And then, uh, there was a stick which uh, Adam used for gardening, and it was stuck for years. It's like kind of it. like if anybody's ever seen the Sword in the Stone. It's a lot like Sword in the Stone. Yeah. He just pulls it out and decides, like, this dude is the chosen one. This dude is the one. Yeah, and that's after he had him in prison, and right. his, his daughter got him out. Then this guy goes and pulls this, the staff out of the stone, and Moshe is the man. got to know, you can read the extracurricular books on all of that stuff. Michaela, stop eating the couch. My dog's eating the couch. Sorry. Okay, here we go. And we are on 21. And Moshe was content to dwell with a man, and he gave Moshe Zephora his daughter, and she bore him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass, in process of time, that the king of Mitzrayim died, and the children of Yashrael sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried, and they, their cry came upon Elohim, 
came up unto Elohim by reason of the bondage. And Elohim heard their groaning. And Elohim remembered his covenant with Avram and Yitzhak and Yaakov. And Elohim looked upon the children of Yashrael, and Elohim had respect unto them. See, the Torah is not bondage. It could be worse. You could have a bunch of Egyptians whipping you, making you make bricks. That's bondage. Making bricks without straw. Not, not, not yet, not yet. Right, You're right, still right, getting right, straw. Right, right. yeah. No, Hold on. Don't hey, hey, but we it. get fish in Egypt. We, should, we don't want to leave this place. We, we have fish and, and fruits. Fruit. The fruits are better in Egypt. Let's go back. These guys are like crying to y'all to save them, and then, then they uh, start like, yeah, I know. We're breaking the story. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sure you, you guys have probably heard that, right? Spoiler alert. All right, Exodus 3. Okay, any commands, anyone? Nicole? Nothing yet. No. Nobody? Okay. Verse 3. Um, now, Moshe kept the flock of Yethro. Who's Yethro? His Jethro. Father, huh? Jethro. So there's no, there's no J's in Hebrew. So where Jethro came from is the Beverly Hillbillies. That's where Jethro came from. So there's no J's, which that is a joke for people. <laughs> My wife's laughing. The kids have no idea what yeah, Beverly Hillbillies is. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Jethro's a dude on the Beverly Hillbillies way back in the day. So there are no J's in Hebrew is the, is, is the joke that I'm trying to make. As, as So our Messiah's name was Yahushua as well. It was not Jesus, right? That did not come into existence until the year 1611, right? And that was when King James went and stamped a whole bunch of crazy things in the Bible. Yeah, and that's when, uh, like 40 years afterwards, uh, Christopher Columbus, the CC fella, he uh, told us that we're uh, floating. Anyway, I'm done. Where are we at? Okay, first one. It's one of those days. Yeah, it is. Sorry, guys. We're just off the off the cuff. All right, one. And Moshe. Now Moshe kept the flock of Yethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Korev. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a thorn bush. And he looked, and behold, the thorn bush burned with fire, and the thorn bush was not consumed. And Moshe said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the thorn bush is not burnt. And Mighty just says, let me turn aside now and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Like, oh, yeah. He's like talking out loud to himself. It's just so weird. Yeah, I mean, you have to kindle a fire. You got to get it going. But this, fi- this thing this is It's like not, it's like, because when you burn something, like a, especially like a small bush, like that, it's going to shrivel up. It's going to become small. This bush is keeping form while still on fire. Yeah, the endless fire bush. And when Yahuwah saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the thorn bush and said, Moshe. Moshe, and he said, here I am. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place whereon you stand is holy ground. That sounded like a command to me. Um, I don't know, he just says, do not come it's near Moshe, here, though. take your sandals off your feet. I don't, I, that one, I don't think that even uh, uh, it's like, it's interesting, right, because uh, he lights a bush up in the corner of nowhere, right? He's like walking by just on the side of the road, he lights up a bush. He could have like just stopped and put a messenger in the way and said, hey, Moses, but instead he decided to get his attention from a burning bush. Yeah, it is very interesting. And like, uh, I mean, when when we have brother Paul, Shaul, he like stopped in the middle of the road out of a beam of light and was like, "Hey, what's going on?" Yeah. Instead of this, but instead he just lit up a fire in a bush in the middle of nowhere. Well, that was brother Shaul's account. I don't know how many witnesses there were to that account. I think there's honestly. two. Is there two? Okay. Yeah. His wife's like getting us back on track. Okay. And uh, fire, right? Mm-hmm. No. Did you just say it? Mm-hmm. We're not. Six. A, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it was five. Is it? No, we read five. five. Where is this file number dysfunction? I'm sorry, guys. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohai of your father, the Elohai of Avram, the Elohai of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov. And Moshe hid his face, for he was afraid to look up on Elohim. And Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Mitzrayim, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Mitzrayim, and to bring them up out of, a, out of the land, up unto a good land, and a large Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Kinnanim and the Chithium and the Emerim and the Perizim and the Chivium and the Yevisim. So, if we are looking at the Kinnanites, who's that? The Kinnanites, the, 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 the Kittites, the Kittites, the Hittites, the Amorites, Amorites, the Perizites, yep, Perizites, the Hivites. This is Hivites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. Jebusites, and there's another Y. Okay. Now, therefore, behold, the children, the cry of the children of Yashrael is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Mitzrayim oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Yashrael, out of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Yashrael out of Mitzrayim? And he said, Certainly, I will be with you. And this shall be a sign unto you that I have sent you. 
When you have brought forth the people out of Mitzrayim, you shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, The Elohai of your father has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is, your, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto El Moshe, Ehenya Eshur Eheya. And he said, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yashrael, Inna Yahe has sent me unto you. What does your translation say? It says, See, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And Elohim said to Moshe, I am that which I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So it would be, Ihaya Ashe Ihaya. I am that I am. The I am that I am, the Yah. The name of Yahuwah declared to Moshe before the burning thorn bush. The name that Yahushua declared before the Perishim and the high priest at his trial before the crucifixion. Okay. So, Ihaya Asher Ihaya. That's probably closer than uh, Yahuwah, I would say. Um, but it's, uh, the, what, are the, what are the letters of this? Uh, I know of. Y H W H is Yod Hey Vav Hey or Yod Hey Vav Hey yeah, because so, we don't know if it was a W or a V. Right, and there's a lot of people who are Yehovah, um, Yahweh. Honestly, Yahuwah or Yahuwah is much closer to anything than God. Yeah, so. God's just a surtitle, so is Lord, lowercase L or a capital L, lowercase O R D is Baal. So we got to be careful with translations. Okay, verse fifteen. So this is very important. I should have, probably have this highlighted. This is a very important verse right there. Um, this is the name of our our Creator. So. so my version 14 says, yep. And Yahuwah said to Moses, I am who I am and what I am, and I will be what I will be. And he said, you shall say this to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I am has sent me. So there's three different translations on this, and you can see how the translations are way different on all of them. All right, let's roll into 15. And Elohim said, moreover, and tell Moshe, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yashrael, Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Evram, the Elohai of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is, this is my mention unto all generations. Okay, is that a command right there? And this is my mention unto all generations. What does that say in your guys' stuff? So he says, Thus you are saying to the children of Yashrael, Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Yitzhak, and the Elohim of Yaakov has sent me to you. The name of my this is my name forever, and this is my remembrance to all generations. I don't know anybody. Well, sixteen we have like kind of a command, I think. All right, let's roll. This might be iffy. We might have to stop here and then debate this at some point. Okay, so sixteen is go and gather the elders of Yashrael together and say unto them, Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Evram, of Yitzhak, and of Yaakov appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Mitzrayim. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Mitzrayim unto the land of Canaan and the Chittim and the Emerim and the Perizim and the Kivim and the Yevusim unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to your voice and you shall come, you and the elders of Yashrael, unto the king of Mitzrayim. And you shall say unto him, Yahuwah Elohai of the Ivrim has met with us and now let us go, we beseech you. Three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to Yahuwah Eloheinu. I am not sure that the king of Mitzrayim will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. So what, did I say that right? And I am sure that the king of Mitzrayim will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Mitzrayim with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Mitzrayim. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of that her, that sojourns in her house, of her that sojourns in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and ye shall spoil the Mitzrayim. All right. So let's go back to this right here. Okay. And let's see if there's any kind of commandment here. Um, everybody, let's, let's reread this. 14, 14 is, And Elohim said unto El Moshe, just so I have this right. Ihaya Eshir Ihaya. Okay. He said, Thus you shall say unto the children of Yashrael, Ihaya, Ihaya has sent me unto you. 
So I think this was specifically talking about this time that he was talking about saying yeah. this. And Elohim said moreover unto El Moshe, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yashrael, Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Evram, the Elohai of Yitchak, and the Elohai of Yaakov, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my mention unto all generations. So I, this sounds to me like... Yeah, I, just, I think that's command. It says, I am to be remembered to all generations. This, this, is, is, my, this is my remembrance to all generations. Okay, so I think this is a command. I, I think we should... Remember the name of Yah. Yeah, I mean, that's what it says. And Elohim said, moreover, unto El Moshe, this you shall say unto the children of Yashrael, Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Avram, the Elohai of Yitchak, the Elohai of Yaakov, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my mention unto all generations. Nicole, are you with me here? I think so. Anyone, anyone yeah, else? Yeah, I think, I think that's yeah. command. Because all generations. No, for all not, generations. Not, not just this. So we name. need to have his name. We need to have it for all generations. Remember my name for all generations. Okay, so we will actually add this one in to the laws after this because I don't want to take another fail. And so we will not waste your guys' time, right? Eli's actually doing it right now. I didn't even see that one coming. Just ghost stutter typing. Okay, so we will get this added right here with the verse and everything into this. And we will not waste your time with that, but we will show that... The next time that we do this, and so we actually picked up one command. Yay! Ooh, First time, a while. Yeah, it took a while. We get a lot of commands soon enough, so. Yeah, this is really super cool. And so this is a super awesome command. I mean, this is something that, you know, the, here's the problem is the Jews, the Jews will not say the name of Yahuwah. They will yeah. not, they only say, they say it's, like, it's, or something like that. Like, yeah, like, it's like, like, car or something. I don't know. And it's they can't say weird. it, right? Like, they don't want to say it. We, back in the day, we talked to, uh probably with the rabbi yeah the rabbi and we're like uh <laughs> how do you guys pronounce uh yahuwah in your guys's language and he's like you're not supposed to say it. you're supposed to say call we like, were we like were converting sort of... the rabbi and he was attempting to convert us and it didn't work out he, he ended up never talking to us again yeah it was literally the last time we ever talked yeah he did not yeah. like messiah yahushua he was very upset about that entire thing okay well that's awesome we got a command the command is very cool we're going to probably discuss this a little bit more after this get it down into this and thank you guys so much for spending time out there with us and we know again that your time is precious and our family truly truly enjoys having all of you guys out there there's just tons of people out there that we meet all the time you guys are uh, just a wonderful group of people you guys are blessed by the almighty name of yah and you know it's it's the torah keepers that are really in the favor of yah and really the people that are going to be changing the world to come and that will be in charge of the kingdom to come so guys with that thank you guys very much boys do you have anything else uh we have a youth group for uh oh, yeah. kids if you like the younger generation needs friends to that need to talk about the tour have questions we are there in the group if you guys need any help with anything we are usually always active in the group if you guys need questions help so yeah absolutely and we're doing it live on thursday or attempting again to do live we we tried several times and it just, it was the, the powers that be did not make that one happen. But we are gonna try to go live on Thursdays. I don't know what time zone that is for everyone. We'll get this synced in. Attempt to make it happen again. And yeah, this is the youth, we have a Telegram channel and it, it's more for basically support of youth. If you guys are out there in this wily world and you need um, some Torah keeping talk, then this is it, right? We are the, uh, we are here and we are very appreciative of all of you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. And any prayer requests yeah. oh. let us know as well. Yes, Nicole, thank you very much. If you guys have any prayer requests whatsoever, we have an active list, and I, I'm going to do a video and put everybody on the active list, and then anybody who doesn't want to be on the active list, let us know. Probably everybody wants to stay there. But if you guys have prayer requests, we are actively seeking people. Um, if you can you know, at least give us your first name so that we have a direction for it and possibly what, what your, your issue is, we are happy to pray with you and uh, put you on our family prayer request list. So... I think that's it, everybody. That's it. That's yeah, it. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. Yeah. Shalom. 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 All right, don't forget the name of Yahuwah. That is the command. Much love.